You are now listening to Shia, the era of our female-led society, a dramatic fiction audiobook series written by Tierica the Oracle, presented by FemaleLed Society dot org. Chapter five. Since Rain is an aristocrat, she is a full-time government employee who is a part of the leadership class. She has her own office staff to help facilitate her social initiative, the Wellbeing Program, which she created. The Wellbeing Program is fully funded by the government for up to 10 years, given its proven effectiveness. Rain's Wellbeing Program aims to give teens a psychological advantage during those critical development years. By using current technology and multimedia platforms, Rain's team produces workshops, workbooks, books, songs, poetry, comedy, and meditation to teach tactics for mental freedom. Rain walks into her office and grins when she sees that her staff has decorated it with balloons and a banner that reads, Congratulations! (laughs) She pulls her team together to explain how her nomination will impact their work. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for the great celebration. I am just as surprised as you are, and I'm tired. (laughs) I haven't gotten much sleep since the announcement was made that I was going to become a candidate for a community Shia. We have a solid team, and our agenda is still moving forward, so this isn't a break for us. I just received word that I will be traveling for the next eight weeks for my evaluation to become the community Shia. This means that my program coordinator, Tanner, will take over. Respect him as you would respect me. This also means that while I'm gone, there will be a representative from the Shia Supreme's office visiting to evaluate our team's effectiveness. I know it's a lot, but we have nothing to hide and we're doing damn good work. Just be yourselves, tell the truth, and let the light shine on us. I'm ready. Are you all ready? The office cheers. Yay! Rain excuses herself and walks away into her private office. I'm not ready, she mutters. Who am I fooling? She checks her notifier and it is lit up with messages. Curious, she clicks the first link and reads the subject line. Three aristocrats battle for community Shia position. Who is our favorite? Intrigued, she clicks inside to read and her mouth drops open. Poll results. 80% favor Brian to win Community Shia. Rain Kelly is too young and too naive to be a Community Shia. She can't meditate her way through the community's problems. (gasps) Rain closes the message and taps another. The subject reads, 23 reasons why Rain Kelly's nomination for Shia is a joke. She taps another message. The subject Have a heart. Let a man support our female-led society as community Shia. Choose Brian. Oh, no. They don't want me to be a Shia. Rain realizes. A tear forms in her eye. She shakes her head to stop it. They want me to lose. Change is natural. Change is necessary. Glory reminds herself as she takes a walk through her backyard garden. She doesn't maintain the garden herself, but she likes to pretend she does. She checks on the progress of the fruits and vegetables her staff have planted. She loves her home in Sewer America because it feels so lush. So many plants and flowers. It's a real Garden of Eden type of place. None of her other homes have this type of connection with nature. There's even a gazebo behind the garden where she can rest, take a nap, but just sit and think. She presses a button on her bracelet as she overlooks the tomatoes. Cameron? Yes, ma'am, his voice comes through almost immediately. Cameron is her keeper, a title she gave her first assistant when she realized that she was her gatekeeper and the keeper of her schedule and the keeper of basically her whole life. (laughs) But now that she has Cameron, he's also a keeper. Cameron keeps things flowing. He knows what to do and how to do it. 
He knows what to say and he remembers when she forgets. Cameron is the best. She always lets him know how much she appreciates him. Cameron, how is coordinating the nominees going? I'm almost done. I have their next eight weeks set up. They will all take turns being evaluated by each community Shia for one week. So that's six of their weeks. And then the seventh week, they will all spend it together with you. The eighth week, you haven't mentioned what that will be yet, but I did book a cabin in the mountains for them all. Just like you asked, did I miss anything? No, that's about it. When the itinerary is finalized, let me know. Oh, what is the status of the new custom bracelets I commissioned? They're almost done, say another month. They're in final testing right now. Good, good. Thanks, Cameron. I'm going to spend the rest of the day inside so you can take the day off. We're in Sewer America. Go do something fun. Cameron laughs. I appreciate it, ma'am. I'll try. He hangs up. Glory removes her shoes so that she can feel the grass beneath her feet. She flings them over her shoulder and walks toward the Grand Gazebo. She steps inside to find a shallow flowing pool off to the side perfect for cooling off her feet. She lifts her dress and sinks her feet into the water, smiles and wiggles her toes. May I help you with that? She doesn't even have to lift her eyes. She knows that voice. It's Omari, her favorite attendant. He joined her household as a personal assistant and has remained for nearly five years. They've gotten close, very close and she doesn't know what her life would be like without him. He is excellent at being supportive and pleasing her, which is really his only duty. Of course you may, she encourages him and smiles. He is shirtless as usual, wearing cargo shorts and sandals. He sits next to her and lifts her foot to dangle across his lap. He takes a handful of water and sprinkles it over her toes. He does it again and then pinches each toe lovingly. Do you want to talk? Omari asks her. Glory takes a deep breath, nods, and repositions herself so that her head is laying against his chest. He is seated against a stack of pillows. The sound of water flowing offers a calm reassurance. She talks to him. She really talks. She expresses her feelings. She runs down her to-do list. She criticizes a few of her staff. She reminisces about her past. She expresses a few doubts and makes her most important wishes. Omari listens. He smiles. He listens. He rubs her arm and kisses her forehead while she speaks. He listens. Ooh, I'm getting hungry, Glory realizes. I thought you would, so... I made up some sandwiches with the crust cut off just the way you like them. He steps outside of the gazebo and returns with the picnic basket packed with sandwiches, fruit, and drinks. He feeds her bite by bite, and she loves every second of his adoration. When she has had enough to eat, she feeds him. Sandwich bite, grapes, brownie bites. She wipes the crumbs from his cheeks and gives him a peck on the ear. <laughs> you know I love you, Glory, Omari says to her. I know. I love you too, Omari. No, Omari interjects and tilts her face to look him in the eyes. I really do love you, Glory. Being here with you is my dream come true. I'd do anything for you. She smiles at him lifts his hand and places it on her thigh. All you have to do is please me. Yes, ma'am, he says. <laughs>